Good day, everyone. So this week, our lesson is going to be um, doing a landscape with an underpainting of blue and yellow. Um, those of you that have done uh, sunset silhouettes before, it's a similar idea, so this is a, a little demo, um, where you do a wet into wet wash first let it dry and then you can add darker things on top and I'm suggesting a focal point like a tree um, and the nice thing is as you can see sometimes the a little bit of the color from the first wash will glow through depending on how transparent and how much water you add to the um, the other things that you put into the landscape so it doesn't have to be a landscape like here's an example uh, where I put orange, uh, well, probably it was probably yellow and red first, and then added the darks. And again, you can see that nice uh, glow coming through in the middle values, um, and in the dark values, it doesn't come through so much. So make sure when you add your details after the wash dries that you're including some light and middle values on top of that. Here's another example, this is a print. I don't have the painting anymore. I hope you can see this. Um, and then I also did a little lifting on this. Um, there's a lost edge. So um, the background was all done first and dry before I started putting in the details of the cat. So what you want is a, a reference that has sort of a, a lot of a golden color um, in some areas. And greens, of course, would work because um, we're using yellow and blue, two primary colors, and when you mix them, you get green. So you can layer on um, blue on top of the yellow later or yellow on top of the blue to get, uh, to get those green values or the green colors. So this would be a nice example. Usually you get the blue up in the top where the sky is, but I'll show you some examples where it might not be. This this part back here will be fair, it will stay fairly yellow, and then in the front, I can add some um, blue on top of the dry yellow to get the green. Here's one where I would see blue, not only in the sky, but maybe a part of the wash of blue. Now the blue and the yellow are gonna all be done at once, wet into wet, uh, as I, I'm going to show you, um, and they can fuse together. Here's another example where you might have a, a river. So the focal point is not a tree, but uh, it could be a, a bird in the sky, or you could have a foreground tree or something rising up here. Now these cliffs here have a lot of yellow, golden yellow in it blue up here could have had, I could have had yellow um, and then uh, blue in the center also and then maybe even when the um, yellow is part is still wet I could add a little bit of the blue in there to get that greenish look and then add the details later now here's one where it's reversed this was uh, at sunset but we still had light hitting the water so the yellow was on top in the sky and the blue on the bottom. So kind of look at your reference and see what's going on. Um, so this is the reference I'm going to use. This was in uh, the Lake District in Northern England. And I kind of, uh, I kind of liked how this uh, picture turned out. So what I did first is, and, and I've, I will post this on the, the Google Classroom, but I, um, I first did a drawing, a, like a loose gesture drawing, then I started to do a contour drawing, and I took a picture of it, and then I took, and first of all, I, I um, measured the newsprint paper for the preliminary drawing, the same size as my quarter sheet that I was going to put it on. And then I have the graphite, the Sorel graphite transfer paper, the darker side is what goes down onto the um the watercolor paper put it on and then used a, a a red ballpoint pen uh and the only reason i use red is so that i could make sure i didn't miss any places um but any ballpoint pen would work 
And so I've transferred it. But there's one other thing I did before I, I called this part done. I And this seems like a pain in the neck to do this, but I went back over all my graphite transfer with a regular pencil. Because the tendency is for this Sorel to, when you put a wash over it, it disappears. So all that work and then you don't, you aren't able to see it. Another idea would be to do your wash first and then transfer on top of the dry watercolor. The only thing is the the um, graphite transfer paper will often leave some a lot of smudges. So what I did is I took a, a, a squish, squishy eraser, uh, let me see if I can find it, like this, a kneaded eraser, and after I went back over all my all my uh, graphite transfer lines, then I I went in and lifted with the kneaded eraser. So all of the smudges are gone. It's fairly clean. And I still see enough of an image that um, hopefully I'll be able to see it once the the uh, wash, wash, the blue and yellow washes are dry. One thing is when you're drawing, when you're going back over, or let, let's say when you're transferring it, I always keep referring back to the reference because there might be something you missed in the initial drawing. So you grab it in the transfer. And then when you go back over it again, again, refer to the to the photo reference, just to make sure, especially if it's something that's gonna look wonky if you get it wrong. Um, tree branches, for example, you don't want them to be getting fatter as you get away from it. And you want the, you, you wanna be careful about too many parallel lines and you know, that kind of thing. So, so anyway, um, I think I'm ready for this. So what I'm gonna do is uh, wet my paper first with a big one inch flat with clean water. And I do have a bigger brush, like a, um, a two inch watercolor brush. So if you have one of those, you can use that to wet. And you can see my pencil isn't a rate, isn't, disappearing. Sometimes I leave the the graphite uh, trans or the preliminary drawing taped on there. In case I want to add something later, I can draw it first, like a bird or something. I can draw it first on the um, newsprint and see if I like it. Erase, draw, erase, draw. And then when I get it right, I can flip it back over and transfer it again um, onto the dry painting and add something. Okay, so I wanna make sure I've really soaked that in. I, I don't want the, the um, washes to dry. If it's a really dry day, you might wanna wet it a couple of times, let it soak in and wet it one more time. It should be shiny. Okay, so as I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do here, I have a lot of foliage here so I could um, use salt or wet into wet in the early stages. I'm putting blue up here and then green, uh, yellow down here, but I could go ahead and put some yellow into the blue while it's still wet to get that, uh, that foliage look. Um, or I could add it later with a um, natural sponge dipped in paint. So there's a lot of things I wanna think about here as I do this. The mountains, um, I think I'll do them when it's dry, but I could do a little row right here of, of trees dabbed in, uh, but maybe not because I want this line to be fairly straight. So I'll, I could always re-wet it later and add those. Okay, and then most of the, the hard edge stuff, the foreground things are gonna be added once it's dry. And let's make sure this is still kind of wet. So you're, you're not gonna really be, oh, the other thing is if you have something that's going to be really white, um, I would mask it out first. Let's say you wanted to put a white bird in the tree or a, a stork flying in the sky. You wanna use masking fluid for that. On these areas here where it's kind of light, maybe I'll just keep that a really light wash. I won't put the deep color on that. Okay, I think I'm gonna stand up for this. Oops, sorry. So 
I've got some new gamboge already mixed. Um, I'll put a little lemon yellow here too. So I can use both of those yellows. And then just to make it easier, I'll have uh, my blue with a different brush. So I'll use some cobalt blue right here. And I think I'll use some manganese blue too, or some cerulean. Here's here's manganese, and it's it's nice because it's somewhat granular. I even have this um, really uh, bright turquoisey color uh, called peacock blue. So you can see that's pretty strong toward green. Okay, so let me start with, and even though the sky is white. I'm gonna go ahead and put blue in it just because that's my demo. <laughs> now I'm gonna make it a little lighter. Oh, look, it was already drying. See, so I should have put one more coat. If you wanna do clouds, you guys are good at clouds, so you can do that at this point. Now you don't have to do half and half. I could add a little bit of blue down in here at this point too. But the tendency will be for the lower half of your page, the lower parts of your page to be yellow. Um, so see, I'm already getting some green. It's gonna dry pretty light because of wet and wet. And I could go ahead and put, I'm looking where this foliage is, and I could dab some yellow in even at this early stage. Maybe I'll leave this uh, place where the roots are sticking out. They're kind of light, so maybe I'll go in and leave that kind of, kind of light. Here's a new gamboge. And I'm going to grab some salt. Should have had that ready. And let me get a round brush. So even though the, the lesson is putting washes down first, you can think ahead here. I could, I could add a little yellow up in here for where I see, where I see this foliage. And see, so um, I'm, I'm sure you might not be able to see it as clearly as me, but I can definitely see all my tree branches still. And maybe I'll even put a, a little bit of blue again down in here. And I'll put a little salt where that now the trick is to there's my horizon maybe i'll put a little bit of let's get there's a little smaller flat this is a three quarter inch um so i'll put just a little bit of this turquoisey blue down in here where my grass is. Now, as it dries too, and I reach the magic moment stage, I could put some just plain water that I, and it's still pretty wet, but this is, this looks like it's maybe getting a little dry. Um, I could tap a little bit of just plain water for some 
little mini backgrounds for the foliage. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dry it. What I should do here also is to clean off the tape so it doesn't run back in on the edge and get a blast, uh, background or a blossom right on the edge. I'm back and uh, it's pretty dry. I've, I've uh, kind of sprinkled off or scraped off the salt as I was drying it. And um, now I want to put some of the middle ground in and I'll use a dry brush technique. I'm thinking I have my little test paper here too. It's always a good idea. So I'm going to use a flat brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of this turquoise, cerulean or manganese, and it's dry, so I'm going to just kind of go across this yellow area and create this middle ground. And I'm going to go right through the tree and the fence and everything. So that's a different technique right there. Um, another thing that I might want to do, and I think I went a little too low with that, is um, see that, uh, I hope you can see, this area that's kind of orangey. So here's where I could add a little bit of red or uh, Scarlet Lake or some, some, um, light red, which is a, like a burnt sienna kind of color. So I'm going to go, and here's my horizon line. So right underneath that, and I could go around the tree. But I don't want to lose that sense of it um, continuing on the other side of the tree. And maybe a little more new gamboge. I can lift a little bit on the tree there. And now I'm going to also do some of these, uh, do the mountains and the distant little individual trees. So it needs to be really diluted. Uh, I see a lot of blue in those mountains and, and, uh, and some yellow. So I'm gonna maybe mix a little bit of a green with a lot of water, it's real watery. And I will And I kind of went around the trees. 
a little bit because now I'm getting a little bit darker. And I can take and, and go a little darker now, maybe with some ultramarine blue and some lemon yellow, maybe a little spring green. And go in and show some individual trees. more lemon yellow and I'll add those details later of the trunks and so on see a little shadow coming in there. This bled down a little bit. I'm not too concerned about it. I'll just get rid of that. So um, I'm going to dry this again because I don't, when I do, I'm going to just show you part of the tree and I don't want the tree to bleed into the background. I'm not too happy with how this green uh, is turning out. So I'm going to go back in and add just a little bit more of this spring green, which I really like and maybe I'll add a little of the lemon yellow with it. And I'm gonna go back in and there we go. That's what I want. That beautiful Scottish or English green. We went at the, um, the end of the summer in August and everything was so beautiful. On this foreground grass, I can, I'll probably add that toward the end, but I can put some deeper blues and yellows and then use my um, palette knife. Why is it I can never find this one? Um, then use my palette knife to scrape some texture when it's half dry. Go and do that. And I, I'll probably not do that on the video. But let me just show you how I would mix some of the darks. Um, I like to have a lot of color in my darks. Instead of using just plain old brown, I'm going to use some complementary colors. So here's kind of a, a bluish green. And I want to darken it up with a little ultramarine blue. And then the opposite of the green is red. So I'm going to use this dark uh, alizarin crimson here, and I'll put it up here. And I could use a little burnt sienna too. Now the, the trick is not to use a lot of water, and there's a lot of water in this palette right now, so I'm going to lift some of that up. Um, so I've got my ultramarine blue, my alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of orange, and here's that, uh, 
that nice um, peacock blue. So I've got a turquoisey blue and a little orangey, and then that green, that lime green that's in there. So I'm gonna go in and oopsie daisy. When my palette is so close, I gotta keep my palette kind of close for the video, but uh, so I spatter sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna use uh, really the biggest brush possible until it starts to feel a little bit too big. And then I can and you can do you can do the tree in layers. So I'm I'm gonna use this nice big brush to go down and oh I like that transparency. turning kind of purple, so maybe I will go with a little more yellow. And every time I dip, I can change it a little bit. Here's more red. Got to be careful my head's not in the way here. Um, this is nice too. This is a phthalo green and it's a really dark, deep green. And if you put a little a lizard and crimson in it, it makes a nice dark. At this point, I think I'm going to switch down to a little bit smaller brush and maybe add a little more water for this. Um, let's warm it up a little bit Going with some Scarlet Lake um, to make it just a little bit lighter as it goes back. A little warmer, a little lighter. as it comes down in here. Trying to make it a little, little more um, meaty right at the base of the branch and then it a little thicker where it connects to the tree. 
and then skinnier as it moves away. So I've kind of got the beginnings of some, and I'll put a lot of those secondary branches and so on. One thing I could do also, and here's some texture on the side, it's kind of at the magic moment, so I can scrape out some texture, and it's kind of fun because it scrapes through to the lower colors. Let's see if I can get... This is, if, it, if you lose that moment, if it's gotten a little bit too dry, um, you can actually recreate it by wetting it again. Here's some little knot holes. And you can also lift a little bit too. If you want like a, up here where it's a little lighter, I could go in and get a damp brush, a thirsty brush and actually lift a little bit of that. Make that lighter. I like kind of like how that got lighter where I added a little more water right there. Um, okay, so now on this area here, it didn't really show up very good. I could re-wet it and put some more um, color in there and salt, uh, but I'm just gonna try the, um, the, the, the natural, erase, uh, natural sponge. So I'm going to mix some pretty deep darks, uh, dark greens. I'm using burnt sienna and phthalo green and a little ultramarine blue. Um, I'm going to get that kind of a... And I, you have to make... The sponge just soaks it right up, so you really have to make a big puddle of it. When I dip in yellow, I try and have a fairly clean brush, but on these other darker colors, I don't care. It doesn't seem to affect it too much. So, works pretty good. I can also put um, some solid color in. Now this had a lot of um, branches on this too and um, you know I could add those. So on. And then I'd want to add the fence and, you know, some more green and so on. Um, one of the things I could do on these little trees is, uh, this is dry enough here. Make them dab and then soften with water. And then later on I can I can go in and add the shadows to show the dark and lights on the trees. And little tiny trunks. Oh, 
or I can actually pull a trunk out of the of the puddle with the end of my brush. Okay, and then of course I'd want to start adding the the fence. With different browns. And you can see that it just goes right over what you had there before. so on. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Um, there. There would still be some more hours worth of work. I did this very fast, but um, you know, take your time. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. And this is a, a, a half, no, a quarter sheet, excuse me. Um, or maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter sheet. Um, so uh, I, you know, work a little larger. Don't, don't go with a little um, eighth sheet uh, um, and go, go a little bit bigger. Okay. Have fun.